Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. One local mother is fighting for her two children suffering from respiratory sinusoidal virus. Her story right now on GMSA. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, starting off at 58 degrees. What does the rest of the weekend look like? Could we see more rain? We're going to check it with Mia in just a few moments. But for now, good morning. It is 6 o'clock. It is Saturday. It is November 5th. Thanks so much for starting your morning with it us. It is my pleasure, Max. I have to say I'm really excited to be here this morning, and it feels a little weird being on this side of the desk. Of course, though, we usually see Jonathan out and about That's doing right. all the amazing stories, whether it's breaking news or good community stories. But today, join us here. I got to ask, though, did you get any rain yesterday? Um, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to tell you. As okay. soon as I got off work, I went straight into my apartment, so... Can't say. Okay, so Mia. Mia. I feel like <laughs> I can I can solve this problem. We have I rain. can answer this question. Okay. So we did find some rain. As expected, the bulk of it was east of San Antonio. So unfortunate for most of us here in Bear County, points farther off to the west, but we did have that front move through and at least across the eastern reaches of our area. We did find some rain and a couple of pretty noisy thunderstorms out there late last night, but all of that activity has cleared out of South Central Texas. That front approaching the Gulf coastline as we speak, you can see more widespread rain and storms over the northwestern portions of the Gulf of Mexico that continues to track eastward here early this Saturday morning. So for us here in South Central Texas, the San Antonio metro area, we are are quiet out there kicking off this morning as well and something that you will notice stepping out here early this Saturday is much cooler and drier air that is filtered into the region in the wake of that front. So temperatures right now about 15 to 20 degrees cooler than where we were just 24 hours ago in the 50s. A couple of low 60s out there, even some 40s though up the I-10 corridor across portions of the hill country. What's left of the cloud cover out there this morning is going to clear out throughout the morning hours. We will see more sunshine, especially as we head into this afternoon. And then those temperatures climb into the mid to upper 70s, even near 80 degrees in spots. So overall, it is going to be a fantastic start to the weekend. And really tomorrow is looking pretty good as well. But what we will find by tomorrow night, that humidity is going to start to creep back in. So that is going to make for some muggy and humid humid conditions next week also could give us some more chances for some fog and sprinkles in the morning. We'll talk all about that. Plus, give you a full look at that forecast coming up in just a few guys. Thank you, ma'am. We're starting this morning off with a terrifying scene of flames filling up a north side home overnight. So take a look. This was around 1230 this morning. This is Floral Ridge, not too far from Jones Maltzberger. Uh, crews on the scene telling us two people were inside the home. They were able to make it out safely, but that home, a total loss. It's been destroyed right now. Still unclear what sparked the fire. Investigators still working throughout the morning, trying to figure out how it all began. And this morning, we are remembering all the lives lost in Sutherland Springs five years ago. On November 5th, 2017, a gunman opened fire nearly 30 minutes after the start of a Sunday service at First Baptist Church of Sutherland Springs. 26 people were killed and dozens were injured. The next five years would be spent on rebuilding. Today, that community is now offering hope to those dealing with the tragedy in Uvalde. Stay united. Compassionate hearts heal. And it's very hard. Our hearts go out to them because we know how hard that is. First Baptist Church of Sutherland Springs will host the memorial service at 1030 a.m. That's at 216 4th Street. The event is open to the public and there will also be a balloon release after the ceremony. And First Baptist Church of Sutherland Springs will host a memorial service today at 1030 a.m. It'll be at 216 4th Street and that service will be open to the public. In today's morning headlines, 15 people are dead after a fire in a Russian cafe. That fire happened after a flare gun discharged during a dispute, according to Russian authorities. Rescuers were able to evacuate 250 people. The roof of the cafe collapsed during the fire. A criminal investigation has been launched and the police are searching for the person who used the flare gun. 
Well, a man behind bars this morning facing charges of identity theft, and this all comes after he was spotted and captured at Disney World. He was seen by an investigator with the U.S. Postal Service. So the fugitive, Quashon Burton, he was visiting Disney's Animal Kingdom when the U.S. Postal Service inspector caught sight of him. Now the inspector, Jeff Andre, he was also on vacation. He knew exactly who Burton was because he signed Burton's arrest warrant. Now Burton allegedly stole the identities of at least four people, getting nearly $150,000 in government loans meant to help struggling businesses during the course of the pandemic. This 31-year-old was on the run for about a year before he was finally arrested. Nike has announced they are parting ways with the Brooklyn Nets point guard Kyrie Irving. The company announced the suspension of the relationship, saying it will no longer be launching his newest sneaker. This comes after Irving sent a tweet linking a documentary that has been criticized as anti-Semitic and then defended his decision to do so. The Brooklyn Nets have also suspended Irving for at least five games without pay. Time now about 6.06, 57 degrees out. A classic dish with a twist coming up on Texas Eats. We get a preview of delicious food at one San Antonio restaurant. We need some samples. We do. <laughs> All right, RSV is on the rise. If you're a parent locally, you know about it. Doctors sounding the alarm not only here in Bear County, but across the country. Coming up next, how a local mother is in the midst of the battle. And taking a look at San Antonio early morning, 6.06 .06 a.m. We'll be checking that forecast with Mia Montgomery when we come back. It's something doctors are calling a health emergency nationwide. And now San Antonio is in the crosshairs of RSV. Oh, RSV on the rise and hospital beds are filling up. Camelia Juarez visiting Methodist Children's Hospital where one local mother tells us her two children are battling to survive. Use antibiotics that the doctors prescribe you, and it's not getting any better. Then you go into the hospital. Jenna Bulig's two daughters, a two-month-old and a two-year-old, are receiving oxygen tonight at Methodist Children's Hospital. She says her daughters are on antibiotics to treat a number of potential other respiratory illnesses that are circulating, like the flu or rhinovirus. Having to put the newborn down because you're having to go back down here to check on sister. They're not understanding. Your life is in the hospital. Her two-year-old was born premature. She was brought by ambulance after she had a concerning, unwavering cough. Methodist hospital officials say over 50% of their children's hospital admissions are respiratory related. You walk into Methodist Children's, you can't really find a seat together. Bulig wants other parents to be cautious about bringing sick kids to school or daycare. Keep the kids safe, sanitize hand washing, make your kids aware of the situation. Don't share drinks. Don't cough in someone else's face. You know, be very weird. If parents have questions about your child's symptoms, you can call 210-22 nurse to be connected with a healthcare professional from Methodist to answer any of your questions. Camelia Juarez, Kisa 12 News. All right, well, taking a, a live look throughout the morning. Sun's not up yet, but you know the best news of the weekend? Is. We get an extra hour of sleep, Mia. <laughs> yeah, that is going to be news. wonderful tonight. Yes, that is something that you will want to remember before heading to bed tonight, setting those clocks back an hour because daylight saving time does end 2 a.m. tomorrow morning. We'll talk a little bit more about that as well as how that's going to affect our sunrise and sunset times here going forward in just a second. But first, let's get you an update on that front that we had moved through last night for most of us, especially in San Antonio and across our western counties. We really didn't find any rain out there, unfortunately, but as we saw that front push through Bear County and move into our eastern counties, that line was able to fill in just a little bit more. We did find a couple of strong and even briefly severe storms push through portions of Guadalupe as well as Gonzales counties. That activity well off to our east here waking up this Saturday. Widespread soaking rain stretching from Louisiana up to the Memphis area out there in western Tennessee, even up to Chicago as the north end of that line approaches the Great Lakes region. That is going to continue to move eastward throughout the day today. On the back side of that, we are quiet here in south central Texas. A little bit of radar noise out there in McMullen County. But the biggest thing that we see from this 
this front. Yes, some chilly temperatures this morning, but part of that is thanks to just the drier air in place. This is a look at the change in dew points, which is how we measure that low level moisture in the atmosphere from right now compared to where we were this time yesterday. Remember waking up yesterday, walking out the door for the morning commute. It was gloomy. It was cloudy and we even had some pockets of drizzle and some light showers out there. A much different story thanks to the fact that that humidity is being shoved out closer to the Gulf of Mexico and you can see those dew points about 30 to even 40 degrees cooler, which just means drier in place out there this morning as well. So it's a lot more comfortable to step out to, but it is chilly out there because we've been able to see those morning lows cool down more efficiently thanks to those lower humidity values. So you will want the jacket if you are stepping out early this morning, but you will not need it into this afternoon. 45 currently up in Kerrville. It's 56 in Hondo, 58 officially over at San Antonio International and 60 down in Pleasanton in Atascosa County. So we do have some clouds still hanging on early this morning, but I do think that's going to break up and clear out through the morning hours. That leads to plenty of sunshine into this afternoon, really helping those temperatures climb 71 by lunchtime. We see those temperatures climb into the mid to upper 70s, even approaching 80 degrees in spots this afternoon as well. We've got a forecast high pointed around 79 officially here in San Antonio, 80 potentially down in Stinson this afternoon, as well as over in Divine, 79 in Utopia, as well as Bandera off to our north as well as our west. And then if you're stepping out for any of those evening plans, pretty comfortable. Low 70s through dinner time transitioning into the 60s later tonight. So yes, that is also when we will want to remember to set those clocks back an hour before heading to bed tonight because daylight saving time officially does end at 2 a.m. tomorrow morning. So take a look at what that's going to do to our sunrise and our sunset times. Today, the sun rises just before 8 a.m., so a little bit later, and it does look to set at about 644, 645 here in San Antonio. But take a look at tomorrow. The sun's going to come up ahead of 7 a.m., and we will see that sun set ahead of 6 p.m. So it is going to get darker a whole lot quicker starting tomorrow evening, just as we gear up for the rest of the fall months and we get ready for the winter months there as well. As we head into next week, some more moisture is going to move in really by the end of the day tomorrow. And that is going to make for some more gloomy conditions Monday and Tuesday mornings, kind of like what we saw yesterday. So enjoy this weekend because it's going to feel a lot better than early next week. I will enjoy it, but I have to say I love gloomy weather. Yeah, uh, I'm happiest when skies are gray. So okay. believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mia. Thank you, Mia. Well, time is 615. Temperatures 57 degrees. And there was so much sports happening last night. We're going to have a look at big game coverage. The Reagan Rattlers taking on the Brandeis Broncos who ran away with the win. And coming up on a preview of Texas Eats, David Elder takes us to a restaurant on the far west side that is serving up classic Filipino dishes with a modern twist. Let's take a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, eight, four, four, fireball five, daily four, zero, zero, eight, five, fireball seven. Cash five, those numbers are two, four, seven, 19, 20. Mega Millions, 2, 20, 47, 55, 59, 19. This pork dish, what's going on with this one? It's our Filipino lechon that's been roasted in the oven for four hours. They've coated the inside with lemongrass and fresh herbs that have really made it super aromatic. We have a traditional dipping sauce to accompany some pickled papaya as well. Sauce on the outside, here we go. It is so good, it is phenomenal. The porchetta that they're making in-house 
is a traditional dish that they're putting their own spin on. I love all the herbs, the way that it's put in between all the little crevices in there. And it's all that flavor just build on the inside. Super crunchy skin on the outside. That pork skin is just rocking. It is tender, it's crunchy. The sauce on the side has a really good flavor to it as well. It really balances everything out and creates the ultimate bite. Obviously, Texas Seat's coming up at 10 a.m. The problem I have with these are he never brings the samples, although he did make uh, Wagyu beef tacos the other day. I wasn't here for that, so it doesn't yeah. count. And I thought I was craving pancakes this morning, but now I want some Filipino food. Yeah, so. come on, David Elder. It's, it's, it's <laughs> breakfast. Huh? 621, temperatures 56 degrees. All right, a lot going on in sports. Spurs, Clippers, we'll have the end result. Good morning and welcome back to last night's game and our big game coverage. Reagan Rattler is taking on the Brandeis Broncos and it was a huge game. District title. Both came into last night's game 7-0 in the district. So let's take a look at the highlights. Game tied at three in the third quarter. And we're seeing the Rattler right there. The Rattlers are striking. Here we go. Running back Cole Pryor from the 20, taking the handoff in and out, finds the hole. And first touchdown of the game, 10-3 Reagan. Next Reagan possession, handed it to Pryor again. This time, wait for it, Woo! bouncing outside, weaving his way 16 yards out. He had more than 200 yards overall. 17-3 Reagan and the Rattlers defense tough as well. They upset the Broncos 24-9. Last year we had a tough loss and it just coming back here to just re retake what was ours because the, the district championship belongs at Reagan. And here we go. Push-ups for points out at Lanhoff Stadium and number one Steel Knights taking on Clemens in the battle of 3-0-9. Low scoring game to start second quarter. Knights airing out Chad Warner going deep sideline. Jalen Cooper behind the defense. That is a 40-yard touchdown. They missed the extra point, so it was only 6-0 Steel. And that would hold till halftime. Third quarter, the Knights on the three. And there he is. Jaden Bailey muscles his way in, giving the Knights a 13-0 lead. And the battle won by Steel 23-0. All right, next up, East Central Hornets taking on San Marcos. Rattlers first quarter. San Marcos, wait for it, jumping on top. Quarterback Cutter Gage Webb taking the snap. Boom, beautiful. Tony Diaz, great catch. 22-yard score, 7-0 San Marcos. And here we go. San Marcos would win 20-16. And the Seguin Matadors went on the road last night, taking on number three ranked Smithson Valley at Ranger Stadium. Let's jump to the highlights. First quarter, ooh. Look at the entrance. Look at all the energy. They're not going to mess around. So in the first quarter, the ball in the Seguin 33. Fake the fullback dive, pitching it to Braden and runs into the pile. Gets lost, pops out the other side. Seven yard score and head to the big game coverage scoreboard for a full recap. You can check that on KSAT.com. And of course, we got to talk our San Antonio Spurs. Keldon Johnson back in the lineup after the Clippers, taking on the Clippers, missed Wednesday's contest. A lot of injuries for the Spurs so far. And the Spurs were down as many as 17 in the first quarter, but they fought back less than a minute to go. Devin Vassell, he had a career night, catch and shoot three, put the Spurs on top. And Keldon Johnson from the corner, Seward was actually lead by four at the break. And the lead would grow with Devin Vassell with a beautiful floater in the lane. The man could not be stopped last night. He had 29 points, but still not enough. The Clippers come back in the fourth and Spurs fall 111 to 106. It is a long season and there is another game today at 8 o'clock taking on the Denver Nuggets and the reigning MVP. Well, good luck to the Spurs. Hopefully they can get a win tonight. Uh, time 627, 56 degrees. Numerous calls to Bear County Sheriff's deputies during early voting. What they saw and what comes next. Silla had a bar fight leads to a shooting overnight. What San Antonio police are saying about the suspect. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Saturday. It's about 631 this morning. It is November 5th. Thank you so much for starting morning with us. Thank you for jumping in. Oh, my pleasure. You know, it's anytime or any anytime I get this opportunity, I'm always excited about it. So bummed Sarah's not here, but happy to fill in for sure. Yeah, it's a Sarah-less show today. We got <laughs> me here show. and me. We've had so much good news. We had some rain yesterday and an extra hour of sleep tonight. 
What more could you ask for, right? Well, maybe just a little bit more rain across our central and western counties. That's what we probably could have asked for. But even though the rain wasn't for everybody, what is affecting everybody early this morning? That cooler and drier air that is filtered into south central Texas in the wake of that cold front that moved in last night. 58 degrees officially over at the airport. So chilly out there this morning. Take a look at that dew point temperature. 27 degrees, which just means that it is incredibly dry out there this morning as well. So really don't have to worry about any sprinkles out there or any fog because those humidity values have dropped very significantly over the past 6 to 12 hours. It was a little breezy out there last night as well. We saw some wind gusts generally upwards of about 30 miles per hour at times. That wind has calmed down and the big story this morning is just just going to be a more fall like feel. You will want the extra layer if you are stepping out this morning. Temperatures in the 50s for most, a few low 60s across our far southern counties, and some 40s up in the hill country. You will not need that extra layer though by this afternoon. Plenty of sunshine takes over. Temperatures climb into the mid to upper 70s. So very pleasant out there. We are looking at some changes though that quickly move back in for the early portions of the upcoming week. We'll detail all that in just a few, guys. This morning, Eric Cantu, the teen shot in McDonald's parking lot is no longer on life support. So according to his mother, he's still receiving high flow oxygen through a tracheotomy. Now, earlier this week, we reported Cantu had surgery. His mother says that procedure helped peel off scar from a lung injury that should allow the lung to now expand. As we've reported, former San Antonio police officer James Brennan shot at Cantu about a month ago. Cantu was hit multiple times. Brennan is facing charges but remains out on bond. A preliminary hearing is set for November 23rd. A crazy situation this morning. San Antonio police trying to figure out how this all happened, trying to piece together a deadly overnight crash. It happened around 1130 last night on the southeast side of town. Details are still limited. They're still coming in at this time, but officers on the scene telling us someone heading on I-37 drove the vehicle off the highway, crashed into a train about 15 feet below on Southton Road. That driver pronounced dead on the scene right now. Not exactly clear what caused the crash. We do expect more updates from police throughout the day, so stay with us on air and online. San Antonio police are searching for a suspect who police say shot two people overnight in a bar fight on the city's east side. This happened around 1 a.m. on the 2600 block of Rigsby Avenue. Police say an argument broke out at the Vibe Sports Bar. One of the men who was fighting says someone shot him in his hand. A bouncer who attempted to stop the fight was grazed by a bullet in his leg. They are both expected to be fine. Police continue to search for that suspect, and this is an ongoing investigation. Now to the investigation into Josh Primo and the Spurs. Spurs coach Greg Popovich finally speaking a week after Josh Primo was cut from the team. The former guard is listed in a lawsuit along with the Spurs organization. Coach Pop's comments came the same day the Spurs played against the Los Angeles Clippers. You know, I, I understand your question and your desire to... Uh, get as many details as you can. For the first time, Spurs coach Greg Popovich addressing the lawsuit against the Spurs organization. It's something Spurs fans have been watching. You know, man, I think it's a shame. It's too bad here in San Antonio and, and, and the reputation that we have in this city and the, the team that we have. It's pretty sad, and I'm just glad that Popovich is, is doing something about it. And now the Bear County Sheriff's Office is opening a preliminary investigation into former Spurs guard Josh Primo. He's accused of exposing himself to Dr. Hillary Cawthon, a sports psychologist who used to work for the team. I spoke up. I asked for help. She claims Primo exposed himself to her nine times during private therapy sessions while they both worked for the Spurs. Primo was dropped from the team last week, months after Dr. Cawthon said she made her first report. It took the Spurs 10 months to do the right thing. That's too long. Coach Popovich, who was in his 26th season with the Spurs, also speaking publicly. This is in the hands of lawyers now, and so I, I can't go there. And I, I would only add that, you know, anybody that has uh, observed the Spurs over a very long period of time knows that an accusation like this would be taken very seriously. 
without any doubt whatsoever. The Spurs organization says they disagree with the details and the timeline Dr. Cawthon and her lawyer presented. Popovich also backing the organization today, saying he's confident the managing staff handled the situation efficiently and promptly. And did it with the utmost care uh, for everybody concerned. I would imagine that over time, details are going to come out. They always do. And everybody has to just wait for that. And Bear County Sheriff deputies have been called to more than a dozen polling places during early voting. The calls involved checking out protesters near polling sites, a suspect taking down political signs, and someone yelling at voters and poll workers. BCSO says no arrests have been made. Nine community policing officers are specifically assigned to drive by polling locations. We're just there trying to keep the peace and, of course, the voters safe and we want them to feel safe while they come and vote. Anyone who encounters an issue at a polling location that does not rise to an immediate emergency can call BCSO dispatch at 210-335-6000. Now, after the end of early voting, Bear County is not the only one lacking voter turnout so far. Medina and Guadalupe County also appear to be on track to have fewer ballots cast in this midterm election than what we saw in 2018. And all of this despite having added voters via registration. Keep in mind, though, the turnout percentages we're showing for 2022, they are based on just 11 of the 12 days of early voting. Still, though, Bear County started yesterday with only 25.2% turnout in in-person voting. 2018, well, that ended with 34.6% turnout. In Medina County, they're at 28.8%. But in 2018, they were with 36.6%. Guadalupe County, even a larger gap. 23.5% in-person turnout ahead of the final day this year, compared to 36.6% in 2018. Its elections administrator says it's hard to say why they're seeing this dip. Voters seem very interested right now in what's going on in the political, the political climate being what it is. There's there's an attitude of participation. So I'm not really sure why they're not coming out, but we were expecting them to come out in a little heavier turnout than what we've seen. Early voting ended yesterday, but if you're planning on voting Tuesday, right now on KSAT.com, we have everything you need to know ahead of Election Day, including sample ballots and polling locations. We'll also be bringing you live updates on Election Night during our election live stream starting at 7. We will have the first results for you then. Just scan this QR code on your screen right now for the latest election updates. And as Jonathan is saying, it is the final countdown to these crucial midterm elections. We're now in the last weekend of campaigning. That's right. Both Democrats and Republicans are bringing out the heavy hitters in key states. ABC's Ty Hernandez has more. The final weekend of campaigning before the midterms, and President Biden is hitting the road, delivering remarks in Illinois today. And later, a rally in Philadelphia with former President Obama in support of John Fetterman, their only joint appearance ahead of the midterms. Also in the Keystone State, former President Trump rallying for Fetterman's Republican opponent, Dr. Mehmet Oz, former President Trump. And you are going to send my friend Oz. But media mogul Oprah Winfrey, who helped launch Dr. Oz's TV career, endorsing Fetterman. I will tell you all this, if I lived in Pennsylvania, I would have already cast my vote for John Fetterman for many reasons. The Oz campaign responding, Dr. Oz loves Oprah and respects the fact that they have different politics. This is the must-win state races in Pennsylvania and Georgia Titan. You tell 10 of your friends to get out and vote, and if you have no friends, go make some friends. A former football star is in Athens this weekend for the Georgia-Tennessee game. His opponent, Reverend Raphael Warnock, is in Savannah. Ty Hernandez, ABC News, New York. Time now, 640, 56 degrees out. A downtown bar in San Antonio is getting ready to serve up some Christmas spirit. We'll tell you how they are incorporating Christmas into their drinks. And it's a daunting question for so many parents. Are you saving enough money for your kid's college fund? What if your kid decides not to go to college? Up next, some tips on what to do. I'm taking a look outside through live cam at 641, 57 degrees, but it doesn't feel that chilly. We'll be checking in with Mia Montgomery after the break. 
Good morning and welcome back. So a college education can cost students and parents hundreds of thousands of dollars. So in an effort to try to ease this burden, a lot of parents start putting aside money when that child is very young. Sarah Costa gives us a look at what you can do with that money if your child decides not to go to college. A 529 plan account is a specialized savings vehicle for college costs. It offers significant tax and financial aid advantages over saving in non-specialized accounts. But what if your child doesn't go to college? You have options. Apprenticeships and vocational schools are also qualified expenses. Too often people think college means that you, oh, it's got to be a bachelor's degree and it doesn't include an associate's degree or certificate uh, or a graduate school. But in this case, it in includes all of them. But if higher education is out of the question, you can leave the money in the 529 plan and continue accumulating tax-free earnings. The account owner, typically a parent, can change the beneficiary of the account so the funds can be used for the child's siblings, the parent themselves, or grandchild. The only requirement is the new beneficiary must be a member of the family of the old beneficiary. If the beneficiary has special needs, you can also roll over the money into what's called an ABLE account. Uh, one of my children is uh, autistic and may not be going to college. Well, I can move the money into his ABLE account to help him pay for his disability-related expenses. Well, if you want to withdraw the money for non-education purposes, it will come at a cost. You can take what's called a non-qualified distribution. Now, the earnings portion of the withdrawal will be taxed at the recipient's tax bracket rate. Plus, there is going to be an additional 10% tax penalty, just like if you take it out of your Roth IRA. That's right. All right, time now, 646. It is 57 degrees. It is crisp out there, not too much humidity. Still, I had problems with the hair this morning, <laughs> but can't blame it on humidity today, Mia. Absolutely, and honestly, can't really blame it on the wind either because the wind has also calmed down pretty significantly after we saw that front move through last night. For most of us, we really didn't see any rain out there, at least in the San Antonio area points west, but our eastern counties were able to pick up on some of that activity. This is a radar loop, a little recap here. Over the past 12 hours, of what we were able to find out there in terms of rain and thunderstorms as this front pushed through South Central Texas really last night at about 7 8 p.m. After that boundary crossed over I 35, we were able to see the southward extent of that line fill in just a little bit more Wilson County reaching down to Carnes County, even over into Guadalupe as well as Gonzalez County is really the big winners when it came to just any of the rain that we did have out out there last night. New Braunfels officially over at the airport, only five hundredths of an inch of rain, but check out Gonzales, about four tenths of an inch, over three quarters of an inch in New Berlin, about three tenths of an inch over in Rungi, as well as the cost community. Now we are quiet now here in South Central Texas, that front now moving off of the coast, and you can see as that continues to push eastward across the eastern half of the lower 48 early this Saturday. Just a line of widespread rain continues out ahead of that boundary that will continue pushing eastward throughout the remainder of the day today. Check out these temperatures on the backside of that front. It's 37 right now in Wichita, Kansas, 34 in Omaha, Nebraska, 41 in Denver this hour, 42 over in Salt Lake City. It is below freezing up in Bismarck, North Dakota. And at that freezing point in Minneapolis here early this morning. We are nowhere near that cold here in San Antonio, but it is significantly cooler than what we saw this time yesterday. Those temperatures about 15 to 25 degrees cooler than just 24 hours ago. So again, you will want the extra layer if you're stepping out early this morning. We are in the 50s across a good portion of the area. 58 here in San Antonio over at the airport. It's 50 54 in Carrizo Springs, 50 out in Del Rio, even some 40s on the map up across portions of the Hill Country, 43 in Kerrville and 41 in Junction. Here closer to the San Antonio Metro, really we're looking at those 50s in a 
couple of low 60s. Now still a very pleasant weekend as in store. We've got that drier air in place, but it is very brief because the humidity is going to increase before the day is done tomorrow, and that's going to lead to not just a muggy start to next week, but it also is going to be a bit warmer out there as well. So definitely enjoy today. The cloud cover we still on have on hand right now does look to clear out a little bit more this morning. More sunshine in store this afternoon. Temperatures climbing into the mid to upper 70s, near 80 in spots. Forecast higher on 79 here in San Antonio, 80 in Sabinal, 79 up at Lost Maples into our Sunday. Still a chilly start, a little bit warmer finish. Those temperatures are going to climb, I think, into the low to mid 80s tomorrow afternoon. We see those winds flip back in from the southeast by the end of the day tomorrow, and those dew points are going to climb into the early portions of next week. So I think by Monday and into Tuesday, kind of like what we saw yesterday, some fog will be possible in the mornings, as well as some sprinkles, and then we'll monitor for another rain chance by the end of next week as we see our next front move in, guys. Thank you, Mia. Well, it's uh, nice to say that we are not in negative temperatures. I'll take 70s and 80s all day, every day. And it's something we've been talking about this morning. A great weekend because don't forget, lighter mornings and darker evenings are on the way. We get an hour back. Daylight saving time comes to an end this weekend. This is when our clocks fall back one hour despite gaining an extra hour. Experts say the time change can still throw off some people's sleep pattern. So it's advised to limit your caffeine. I'm not sure I like that idea. <laughs> and alcohol before going to bed and exercise to allow your body to be sleepy at the right time. All right, so I visited my family, I want to say two weeks ago, and my mom did like the ultimate mom thing where she started drinking coffee at like nine o'clock at night. <laughs> That's my dad's like, thing. I was as like, well. what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, Five definitely. o'clock's my cutoff because then I'm like wired for the oh, night. Oh, goodness. I've, I've been there. Not, not good when you have to be up early in the morning. <laughs> Time is 651, temperature 57 degrees. And coming up, how a local bar is preparing to be in the holiday spirit, serving up some new Christmassy cocktails. And take a look at Trans Guide. It looks like smooth sailing, just a couple of vehicles out in the road. That's a look around San Antonio. All right, so we know the Powerball hitting $1.6 billion tonight, but if you're interested in just a few million, here are your numbers. Pick three, eight, four, four, Fireball five. Daily four zero zero eight five fireball seven and cash five two four seven nineteen twenty. That mega millions numbers are two twenty forty seven fifty five fifty nine and that big number nineteen mega plier two. Welcome back. Listen to this. A downtown bar is getting into the holiday spirit by hosting a pop-up Christmas-themed cocktail bar. Esquire Tavern will host a Miracle on Commerce Street pop-up cocktail bar serving Christmas Christmapolitan. Uh, starting November 21st, festive cocktails like the Snowball Old Fashioned made with bourbon, wormwood, bitters, and gingerbread syrup, and Grandma got run over by a T-Rex made with vodka. <laughs> You have to try that one out. Lime and spiced pomegranate will be featured on the menu. According to their website, they will be accepting reservations online. And speaking of the holidays, SeaWorld San Antonio's annual Christmas celebration returning for the holidays this month. Starting on November 10th, what is referred to as the largest light display in Texas has 9 million lights. It's going to be lit up through January 2nd. The Marine Life Park will transform into a holiday wonderland with the new Oh Wondrous Night. Now, it has live action musicals. It has everything that SeaWorld normally has and tickets start at $49.99 for general admission. Is that, uh, you know what, I'm more inclined to go to the bar than SeaWorld. Yeah, I'm honest. already making my reservation for the <laughs> grandma got ran over by a T-Rex. Got to try that drink. Well, 656, temperature is 57 degrees. All right, chilly out there right now, but after we see the sun come up, those temperatures and the drier air together, helping those temperatures warm into the mid to upper 70s out there Ooh. this afternoon. So it is going to be really nice to get out for any of those weekend plans this afternoon as well. A little bit warmer tomorrow, and then we'll monitor for some increasing humidity early next week. All right, Mia, thank you so much. Jonathan, thank you so much. Thank Don't you. worry. We're going to take an hour-long break for Good Morning America. We'll see you back here at 8 a.m.
Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, San Antonio. Happy Saturday, and thank you so much for starting your weekend with us. So we're obviously in front of KSAT. It's all chilly out here. How are you feeling, Jonathan? It's a little chilly, but, a, but a, what a better way to start the show than starting it outside to really get a feel for this beautiful weather, this beautiful weekend. And I'm feeling pretty bad about myself because we saw all the runners running by. And I got to say, Mia, it is a perfect morning if you want to get out there, go for a jog, just enjoy the fresh air. Absolutely. Yeah, it feels so much more comfortable out there when you do step outside this morning compared to where we were just 24 hours ago, thanks to the cold front that we had move in last night. So, yes, it is a little chilly, though. You definitely will want the extra layer if you are stepping out early this morning, but you will not need it this afternoon as those temperatures climb into the upper 70s here in San Antonio. Y'all, it is going to be a beautiful day for those first half of the weekend plans. All right, let's go ahead and take a look outside at those lowering dew points. So remember, dew points are how we measure that moisture in the lower levels of the atmosphere. That brown color you see here in the central portions of South Texas stretching back over to the Rio Grande, that is that drier air taking shape, making for that more comfortable feel out there this morning, all thanks to the passage of that cold front that we saw move in last night. Now, unfortunately, Fortunately for our area, most of us missed out on the rain activity. After that boundary did cross over I-35, we were able to see a few thunderstorms develop across portions of Guadalupe, Gonzales, Wilson, even Carnes counties. And then that filled in even more so as the boundary pushed out of our area. You can see here this Saturday morning more widespread rain now ahead of that front over the northwestern Gulf of Mexico. So that will continue to move away from from South Central Texas. We are dry and quiet out there waking up this morning as well. It was a little breezy last night as we saw those winds flipping from the northwest. Those winds are calm out there though this morning as well. And those temperatures are about 15 to even 20 degrees cooler than where we were 24 hours ago. So it is a chilly start to this Saturday. Temperatures in the 50s here in Bear County, 53 officially this hour over at the airport. Take a look up in the hill country though even cooler. We've got some temperatures in the 40s, 48 in Bandera, 44 over in Kerrville. We do have a few lingering clouds across portions of the region this morning. That will continue to clear out though throughout the remainder of the day today and take a look at this. Plenty of sunshine is in store thanks to those drier dew points that we do have in place. Low 70s by lunchtime. Those temperatures continue to climb into the upper 70s, nearing 80 in some spots this afternoon. Very pleasant light and variable winds in place today as well. So overall, a pleasant weekend is in store for South Central Texas. What we are going to find by the end of the week tomorrow or the end of the weekend, I should say tomorrow is the humidity is going to start to build back in. So that will make for some more muggy conditions next week. And those temperatures will be on the rise as well. We'll get you all those full details coming up in just a bit, guys. Thank you, Mia. New this morning, San Antonio police investigating, trying to piece together how this deadly overnight crash happened. So this is what we know right now. It happened around 1130 last night on the southeast side of town. Uh, details still limited. More information is expected throughout the day, but officers on the scene telling us someone driving on I-35 drove the vehicle off the highway, crashed into a train that was about 15 feet below the highway. That happened on Southton Road. The driver pronounced dead at the scene right now. Not clear what exactly caused the crash, but we do expect more updates throughout the morning, so expect more online and on air. A man is fighting for his life this morning after he was shot in the face. This all unfolding around 3 o'clock this morning near Bonanza and Monterrey Street. That's where police say the man was shot in his vehicle. He then lost control and hit a parked car. He was later taken to the hospital with critical injuries. Right now, police don't know why he was shot and have not made any arrests. Speaking of investigations, the search is on for the person who shot two people at an east side bar. This all unfolded around 1 this morning on Rigsby Avenue. Officers there are telling us one man shot in the hand after an argument at the Vibe Sports Bar. A bouncer who tried to then stop the fight was also grazed by a bullet in the leg. 
Both are expected to recover, but investigators are working to try to figure out who exactly pulled the trigger. Election day is almost here. More than 309,000 people casted their ballot during early voting. We have everything you need to know ahead of election day on our website. Just head over to KSAT.com. And Bear County deputies responded to more than a dozen disturbances during early voting. There were 51 sites, but on Tuesday, that number will be in the hundreds. Patty Santos takes a look at that problem and the problems the deputies are seeing. My title is a deputy sheriff, um, assigned um, to patrol still, but a part of SCORE. Community policing officer Ashley Martinez is assigned to drive by polling sites in her district. But for the most part, all of the polling sites has been peaceful. But there's been a handful of disturbance calls, like this one on the west side on Wednesday. Deputies were told a man was screaming when he was asked to take off a political hat. Everybody was yelling that way, so I walked out and called 911. Any Bear County deputy can respond, but nine BCSO community policing officers are dedicated to patrolling polling sites. This is one of our, one of our busy um, polling sites. It's part of an active effort to be seen and bring ease to those voting. We want them to feel safe while they come and vote. BCSO says no one's been arrested, but they have been dispatched 16 times to check out problems at polling locations. Problems include checking on a suspect taking down campaign signs, a protester, and someone yelling at a volunteer. If someone is arguing, then call us, you know, so because we don't want that argument to turn into a bigger situation. The deputies have been advised to stay in their vehicles when they drive by a polling place, unless there's a call. We don't want to alarm the people at the polling sites that, oh, hey, with our presence. The number of polling sites is expected to grow by a few hundred on Election Day. To report a problem at a polling location that's not a life-threatening emergency, you are urged to call BCSO Dispatch, that number, 210-335-6000. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. That's the latest on the silver and black. Keldon Johnson back in the lineup last night taking on the Clippers. Remember, Keldon missed Wednesday's game with tightness in the right calf. Spurs down by as many as 17 in the first quarter. They fight back less than a minute to go. Devin Vassell having himself a career night. Catch and shoot three, puts him on top. And then Keldon Johnson from the corner lead by four at the break. Spurs would grow that lead to 10. Devin Vassell with a beautiful floater in the lane. Led the Spurs with 29 points, but not enough. The Clippers would come back in the fourth. Spurs fall 111 to 106. It's a long season, though. Spurs taking on the Nuggets tonight, 8 o'clock at the Ball Arena. And if you're a baseball fan and, well, you're from Texas, this is a big time of the year. Huge night in Houston. The Astros back at home, ready to take on the Philadelphia Phillies. Game six of the World Series. And here's the thing. The Astros have a chance to win it all tonight. Momentum's in the right place, coming off those back-to-back -back wins. So if the Astros can beat the Phillies tonight, they will be world champions for the second time in five years. First pitch is set for 7:03. If Philly wins, that forces a Game 7 in Houston tomorrow night. So, Jonathan, who do you think? I don't know. There's going to be a lot of uh, happy Astro fans mm -hmm. if they win, but I know a lot of Philly fans as well out there. Oh, yeah. All right. Time now, 8:08. 54 degrees now. And the Festival of, Festival of Lights is back at Hemisphere just ahead. How you can take part in the Diwali celebration. And let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. We can tell you firsthand, it is a crisp start out there. 54 now. Will we see a warm-up? Will we see rain this week? We're going to check in with Mia in just a few moments. Happening tonight, the Diwali Festival of Lights. It's a celebration of Indian and Hindi culture. All right, so this year it has a little bit of Latin flair as well. So take a look, thousands dancing the night away. If you go, you're going to see a lot of marigolds. The color represents good luck for the new year. Organizer Asha John says there's going to be entertainment, a river parade, fireworks, and so much more. A new feature this year is a 30 by 30 illumination maze that you could walk through. That's a colored light maze. The event is happening tonight at Hemisphere Park and at the Arneson River Theater from 4.30 p.m. until midnight. Obviously, all this happening outside. So, Mia, the question is, 
Will weather cooperate? The good news is it will cooperate. In fact, it is going to feel pretty good if you are stepping out to that celebration later this evening, or really if you just have any plans out and about throughout the remainder of the day today. So we had that front that moved in last night. Unfortunately for us, again, we really didn't see a ton of rain in areas that really, of course, could use the rain, but we were able to find a couple of showers and some strong thunderstorms develop across our eastern counties after that boundary continued to move farther off to the east. And really, that is still the story here this Saturday morning. This big area of low pressure is still dragging that cold front now into the eastern half of the lower 48. And ahead of that boundary, you can see just a big line of rain and thunderstorms that continues to move northeastward here, stretching from the New Orleans area up through almost the entire state of Mississippi over into western Tennessee, just past through the Memphis area and even up into the Great Lakes region. Now we, of course, are on the back side of that front now, so we are pretty quiet across south central Texas, and it is a lot more comfortable out there early this morning compared to where we were this time yesterday. Remember step out for the morning drive yesterday. It was just very gloomy outside. We had some light showers, very muggy and sticky because all of that humidity was in place. Well, now that we've seen those northwesterly winds take over in the wake of that front, we are seeing drier air quickly move into the region. This is a look at the change in dew points, which is how we measure that low level moisture from now compared to where we were this time yesterday, about 40 degrees drier. So it definitely feels more comfortable when you do step out for any of those Saturday morning plans, but you will want to take the extra layer with you because it is still plenty chilly across portions of the area. 53 in San Antonio. It's 56 in Pleasanton this hour, 58 down in Catula, seeing some 40s across portions of the hill country. Check out even further north, 38 in Junction, 34 in Ozona out in West Texas this hour as well. Now, as we head into the afternoon, though, that drier air while while it is able to cool down pretty efficiently through the overnight hours. It also warms up pretty efficiently into the afternoon and we will see plenty of sunshine through the afternoon as well. So combine those two things together and temperatures will climb into the upper 70s here in San Antonio near about 80 degrees. We've got a forecast high officially here in town around 79, 80 down at Stinson, 78 in Floresville, 78 over in Nixon as well, as well as over in New Braunfels, 79 in Bandera this afternoon. Very pleasant out there. That will continue to be the trend if you are heading out for any evening plans. Temperatures fall into the low 70s by dinner time and then into the 60s later tonight. Now speaking of tonight, daylight saving time officially ends at 2 a.m. tomorrow morning. So before heading to bed, you will want to remember to set those clocks back an hour and take a look at what that's going to do to our sunrise and sunset set times today. The sun just came up ahead of the 8 a.m. hour. It will set at about 644, but tomorrow the sun comes up ahead of 7 a.m. and it actually will set before six. So as we finish out the fall months and get ready to head into the winter months, it's going to start getting darker a lot quicker, of course. So fall back later tonight and into early tomorrow morning into our Sunday. It will be just a little bit warmer out there. We'll see those temperatures climb into about the mid 80s after starting off chilly in the 50s. And then as we head into the early portions of the upcoming week, we'll see just a little bit more moisture work back in. Really that humidity moves in by the end of the day tomorrow. So by Monday morning and then election day on Tuesday, we will need to monitor for maybe some areas of fog and a few sprinkles out there as well, guys. Thank you so much, Mia. Good reminder, my bedside clock is already set back. Nice. There you go. Unintentionally. What? So, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mia. Time now, 817, 54 degrees out. And things are getting a bit scruffy here hey. on GMSA. After the break, we're talking about No Shave November and what you can do to help so many. So the good thing what Mia was talking about, it's getting darker earlier. I gotta sleep at like 5.30. Jeez. So that the six o'clock like sunset, I'm here for it. <laughs> Speaking of being things I'm here for, winning the lottery. Pick three, eight, four, four, fireball five. 
Daily four, zero, zero, eight, five, fireball seven. Cash five, those lucky numbers are two, four, seven, 19, 20. And the Mega Millions, 2, 20, 47, 55, 59. And that big number, 19, Mega Plier 2. Good morning and welcome back. I'm laughing because our executive producer, Joy, told me I look like the guy in the No Shave November graphic that started <laughs> everything. So No Shave November is here. We want to take a moment, look at the leaderboard. Shout out to David Sears yeah. taking the lead right now. And I want to, you know, obviously give a shout out to everyone at GMSA who, who's doing this. And I also want to point out that KSAT right now, we're 17th in the nation on the leaderboard. Wow, so that's really impressive. Yeah. So obviously we're doing well, but we could continue to bring in donations, that would be super helpful. So, Jonathan, I know that we just sent in our um, testimonials to Stephen Cavazos, who's right. actually one of the co-captains this year. Uh, you know, why do you do No Shave November? You know, I, I do No Shave November just to be part of the help, being part of the cause. I think it's so important to be able to help folks uh, out there that are going through this horrible situation. Uh, and if I can, you know, put my two cents into this effort, I am going to do it. Sign me up every time. So Absolutely. that's exactly why I do it. Yeah, and so this was the graphic that our executive producer, Joy, was joking about. I'm not there yet. We're only in day five. <laughs> yeah, uh, but give, no. us some, give us some time. We'll get there. We'll As get there. Jonathan was saying, though, this is really a good cause. This is not just us, you know, feeling lazy and putting the razor down. In, in full transparency, I don't even like growing out the, the <laughs> facial hair. I'd rather be clean shaven. But no, this really is a good cause. And so you can help out right now. Get the phone out. Snap a picture of the QR code. It'll take you right to our shave page on ksat.com. There you can learn so much more how to donate and why. And I think we should be getting those testimonials up. And everyone on the KSAT team putting a 15 to 30 second uh, you know, explainer of why they're doing it. And so many people have such powerful reasons to really step up and help out. And we do so many stories with so many families who go through such terrible situations. So just to know every dollar that you donate can go to help these families, help research, really make a difference. That's right, Max. Again, this is for cancer awareness research and most importantly, prevention. So hopefully, hopefully in the future, Max, we won't need these fundraisers. That's true. All right, time now, 823, 54 degrees out. And coming up next, David Elder brings us a preview of this week's edition of Texas Eats. This right here is the extra hot chicken out here at Miko's Hot Chicken. And it has the hottest pepper in the world, the Carolina Reaper thing. They gave me a glove because they didn't want me to have it on my fingers. This looks like some evil. <laughs> it's, you could just, <laughs> it's just smell it and it's crazy. But here we go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of be a baby. I'm gonna dunk it in the ranch a little bit so it's gonna go down a little bit smoother. That's the bite. <laughs> I shouldn't have done it, but I did it. I need milk. <laughs> oh, Miko, thank you so much. You gotta get milk. You're gonna do it. Have a glass of milk ready. Unless you're crazy, go for it. I drank a little bit of the ranch, it didn't help. <laughs> you gotta go for the milk. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday morning. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. It is November 5th, and it's really starting to feel like it outside. It really is. It's nice to know that it's November. We're getting close to Thanksgiving, and those temperatures are somewhat cool. That's right. So, Mia, joining us live outside. So, Mia, you now have the sunrise. It looks gorgeous out there. It really does. We've got clear skies in place across the majority of the area. I was so jealous that you guys were able to start this show outside that I had to come outside too. And yes, I had to bring my jacket because it is a little chilly out here this morning thanks to the cooler and drier air that has moved in behind that front that we saw last night. So let's take a look at temperatures across the area this morning. Again, a bit cooler than where we were just 24 hours ago, starting off 
off in the 50s for the majority of the area as well. A couple 40s up in the hill country. As we look ahead to our day part forecast throughout the remainder of this Saturday, the sunshine that we have in place right now, that's going to stick with us. So it is going to be a gorgeous day that helping those temperatures climb into the upper 70s, near 80 degrees here in San Antonio. So the extra layer that you need this morning, you will not need that into the afternoon. Evening plans looking fantastic there as well. Sunday is also looking pretty good. It'll be a chilly start, a slightly warmer finish into the afternoon. But as we take a look at our dew point trend, by the end of the day tomorrow, we'll start to see some more moisture work its way back into South Central Texas. That will signal some additional changes that move into the forecast early next week. Y'all, we will have a full look at what we can expect, especially by Monday and Tuesday mornings coming up in just a few minutes. But for now, I'll send it back to you guys in the studio where it's probably just a little bit warmer. Just a little bit. Thank you, Mia. Thank you, Mia. A lot of news overnight here in San Antonio. A terrifying situation as flames filled a north side home. So this was the scene around 1230 this morning. This is Floral Ridge. It's not too far from Jones Malsberger. Crews on the scene telling us there were two people inside the house as the fire erupted. Luckily, they were able to make it out safely. That home, though, we now know is destroyed. Still unclear how the fire started, but investigators are working trying to figure that all out. Another building completely destroyed by fire overnight. This one on the city's west side at North San Jacinto and Perez Street. That's where crews say a small building that was converted into three apartments caught fire. No one was hurt, but four people are without a place to stay. They're being helped by the Red Cross. No word on what sparked the flames. Other stories we're following this morning today. It marks five years since 26 lives were taken in Sutherland Springs. And as Alyssa Cole reports, that community is offering a message to Uvalde. It's a feeling difficult to let go. We would never expect anything like that to happen. A day no one will ever forget. I was right here. I was right here behind this desk and um, everything just changed at the drop of a dime. On November 5th, 2017, a gunman opened fire nearly 30 minutes after the start of Sunday service at First Baptist Church of Sutherland Springs. We got a phone call that there was a, a gunman on the loose. We had to lock everything down and we heard the shots as they were happening. It just didn't sound right. And um, that's when we, we knew something was terribly wrong. 26 people were killed. Here are the crosses that were originally made when our tragedy happened here. The next five years would be spent on rebuilding. This community now offering hope to those dealing with the tragedy in Uvalde. Stay united. Compassionate hearts heal. And it's very hard. Our hearts go out to them because we know how hard that is. Terry Smith, the president of Sutherland Springs Community Association, says Sutherland Springs will never forget the victims at First Baptist. They are planning a special memorial ceremony on Saturday. We all have good memories of them. You know, they were simple, humble people that this is country life. Small town, small community with big hearts. Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News. This morning, First Baptist Church of Sutherland Springs will host the memorial service that's at 216 4th Street starting at 1030 this morning, 1030 a.m. The event is open to the public. And this morning, Eric Cantu, the teen shot in a McDonald's parking lot, is no longer on life support. He's still receiving high flow oxygen through a tracheotomy, according to his mother, Victoria Casares. Earlier this week, we reported Cantu had surgery. His mother says that procedure helped peel off a scar from a lung injury. That should allow that lung to expand. As we've reported, former San Antonio police officer James Brennan shot at Cantu about a month ago. Cantu was hit multiple times. Brennan is facing charges but remains out on bond. A preliminary hearing is set for November 23rd. It is a jam-packed day for sports.
So to help you prepare for some college football and college football Saturday, here's some good ones we're looking at. So first up, we want to head to College Station. The Aggies welcoming the Gators to town. And later today, obviously an SEC matchup. Uh, that is going to happen around 11 this morning. Mia, text a &M. There we go. So we got some fans in the newsroom. I think like our whole weather department. Uh, next up, we got to talk about those Red Raiders in Fort Worth. Texas Tech Red Raiders, a tall order against the undefeated Red Hot TCU Horn Frogs. That game also set for 11 this morning. And of course, we can't really talk sp sports or college football without talking about the Longhorns. Texas on the road taking on K-State, the Wildcats. This one, 6 o'clock tonight. Should be a good one. And then, of course, a top five matchup, the big matchup a lot of people are talking about. A lot of college football playoff implications. The number one and number two teams in the country, the second-ranked Tennessee Volunteers visiting the number one team in the country, the Georgia Bulldogs. Both teams red hot. This one really up in the air. Kickoff for the Bulls and the Dogs set for 2.30 this afternoon. So, as beautiful it is outside, I probably will not see any of the sun. Goodness, I'm always jealous of the newsroom college rivalry. I went to college in Cal State, so. Uh, you got to jump on a Texas team. Jump in. I, yeah. Have UTSA. Let's jump go for on. it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. UTSA. Well, folks, time is 837. Temperature is 54 degrees. All right, after the break, some simple ways that you can offer a helping hand this holiday season. And taking a look outside through live cam, that sun is making its way out. San Antonio looks absolutely beautiful. We'll be checking the forecast with Mia Montgomery after the break. Good morning, welcome back and happy weekend. This morning we want to tell you about two KSAC community events. First up, the Share the Shoes campaign is underway benefiting Zapatos. Zapatos works with schools to help kids get the shoes they need. Donations are being accepted until December 16th, so you can drop them off at any of the SAPD substations. New socks are also being accepted. And Soldiers Angels looking for veterans and military families to sponsor this holiday season. That's right. Registration for the Adopt a Family program will be open until December 6th. Once adopted, families will receive at a minimum, a grocery gift card for a holiday meal and gifts for each child. We have all that registration information and details on our website, ksat.com. And both events are amazing. We've been working with Soldiers Angels for years now, and of course, Share the Shoes. We're gonna be live out at SAPD headquarters on Monday, giving you kind of an explainer how it all works and how it helps the community. But right now, 842 Mia, you're back inside. Tell us about the adventure. It was so fun. I know we briefly just went out the back door, but it just feels so good outside. I'm a big fall weather lover. What about you guys? Oh, I'm 100% fall is my favorite season. I'm all about the sweaters and, as yes. you know, the scarves. So. Uh, and pumpkin spice, right? And everything oh, yeah. nice, always. Oh. So anyways, yes, it was fantastic. Happy to be warm inside, though. Uh, let's talk about, quickly, some of the rain that at least parts of the area were able to pick up on last night. I wish that we would have been able to find more for the central and western reaches of south central Texas. Really, after that front crossed over I-35, that's when we were able to see some showers and storms reach a little bit farther southward into parts of our region. New Braunfels only picking up on about five hundredths of an inch of rain, so really not much over that way. Gonzales, though, four tenths of an inch last night. New Berlin, over three quarters of an inch of rain, so not bad. We had a couple of stronger storms out that way that were able to produce some heavier downpours. You can see that we are quiet here in the San Antonio area early this Saturday morning. We've been showing you pictures of live cam. We've got beautiful sunshine in place. That's going to stick with us today as well. But a much different story for those ahead of that cold front that continues to push eastward here this morning. Still do have this long line of rain and thunderstorms, just soaking rain that stretches all the way from the Gulf Coast up through the Tennessee, Ohio River Valleys, and even up into portions of the Great Lakes region as well. That will continue pushing eastward this Saturday. Take a look at temperatures, though, for a good chunk of the lower 48 this morning. 
in the 30s and 40s out there. 39 in Denver, 35 in Casper, Wyoming, 34 in Wichita, below freezing now in Omaha, Nebraska, thanks to that drier air that's quickly moving in behind this potent front. 27 degrees is the wake up temperature in Bismarck, North Dakota. We are nowhere near those temperatures here in San Antonio, but it is relatively cooler than where we were this time yesterday. As we look at the temperature change from this time to where we were 24 hours ago, about 20 to in some spots, even almost 30 degrees cooler. We are seeing those temperatures still in the 40s and 50s. So if you're stepping out to breakfast with the family this morning or just any other early Saturday plans, you will want probably the light jacket or maybe just a sweatshirt, but you're not going to need that this afternoon. It is a layering day. 43 in Kerrville this hour, 53 right now in San Antonio, 51 in Uvalde, 50 over in Rock Springs. And as we zoom this down, into the San Antonio Metro. It's 58 in Holotus, 52 over at Port SA, and 55 down at Stinson on the south side of Bear County. So overall, a very pleasant weekend is in store for South Central Texas. The humidity is going to increase a bit more, though, before the day is done tomorrow. And that means that we are going to be looking at a few muggier days as we head into the beginning of next week. So this brief relief in those lower dew points, it is very much just that brief and short lived. So do enjoy this drier air while it is here, helping those temperatures warm up into about the upper 70s here in San Antonio this afternoon. Still plenty of sunshine. And then if you are stepping out for any evening plans, we'll be in the low 70s around 72 by 7 p.m. And then those temperatures transition into the upper 60s later tonight. In terms of those forecast highs, 77 in Bulverde this afternoon, reaching over to Bernie as well, 79 in Rio Medina and 80 over in Hondo in Medina County. As we head into our Sunday, it will be a chilly start tomorrow. I do think we will find mostly sunny to partly cloudy skies. Temperatures then climbing into the low to mid 80s by tomorrow afternoon. So we are going to see that warming trend take place already for the back half of the weekend's plans. Winds shift in from the southeast before the weekend is over. And you see this dark green color that's moving back into south central Texas. Texas, that is that Gulf moisture that is going to quickly pump in by the Monday morning drive. So with the gloomy conditions that we saw yesterday as well as Thursday mornings, also we had some fog there as well and even some sprinkles and some spots of light rain. I think that will be possible by Monday morning and then for Election Day on Tuesday. And then as we head into the later portions of next week, we've got a 20% chance for some isolated rain on Friday as we see our next front move through. So all of those things, definitely what we're going to be monitoring, not just tomorrow, but over the next several days. Until then, enjoy this weekend, guys, because it is going to be pretty fantastic. All right, thank, thank you, Mia. You, you bet. Time now, 847, 55 degrees out. It's still ahead on GMSA. We all know that funerals happen every day. But do you know that traditional burials could be harming the earth? After the break, we'll tell you about something called a green burial and what it may be doing better for our planet. Let's take a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, eight, four, four, fireball five. Daily four, zero, zero, eight, five, fireball seven. Cash five, two, four, seven, 19, and 20. And taking a look at Mega Millions, pull out your tickets and check your lucky numbers. Those are 2, 20, 47, 55, 59, that big number 19, Mega Plier 2. Welcome back. Have you ever heard of something called a green funeral? Sarah Costa tells us about a new greener option that some say could have a big impact. We've all come from the earth, so we should go back to the earth as we have since the dawn of time. Beneath the vibrant green moss and gorgeous autumn leaves in the soil of this winding nature trail lie loved ones laid to rest in the original natural way. It feels lighter. It's not as heavy. Yes. Uh, and, you know, the recreational aspect of it, to see people out here just enjoying the property feels good. Remembrance markings etched in real stones, not fabricated unnatural concrete, dot the winding trails. If the stone was not there, you would never know there was a burial there. Nature is incredibly healing. Yeah. Ed Bixby is the president of the Green Burial Council and owner of the Steelman Town Cemetery and Nature Preserve. A natural burial means no embalming, no outer burial container like a concrete vault, 
a biodegradable burial container itself and no upright monument set in concrete. But the biggest part of what we do is the family participation so the family can be part of the entire process from start to finish. For 15 years, he has been reclaiming and restoring natural burial traditions, proving that going green doesn't have to end when our time here does. A traditional burial produces 250 pounds of carbon, whereas a green burial sequesters 25 pounds of carbon. Across the nation in Seattle, Washington, Katrina Spade has developed an option for those who may not have access to open green burial fields. I was approaching my 30th birthday and I started to feel mortal. <laughs> and I started to look into the options for my body after I died. And I found out of a practice that farmers use. And I thought if you can compost a cow, you can probably compost a human being. Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. And so according to Funerals.org, the process emphasizes simplicity and environmental sustainability. And it could be a cheaper option. All right, time now, 8.53, 55 degrees out. And early voting is over and election day is set for Tuesday. Still, there are a lot of questions when it comes to what's on the ballot. And that is why tomorrow on Leading Us Say at 8 a.m., Professor John Taylor, the political science department head at UTSA, is joining us live to discuss key races, signs from the early voting numbers, and what we are learning from the polls. If you have any questions you would like to ask, you can submit them right now. Just head to Leading Us Say section of KSAT.com and join us tomorrow for the full conversation. I need two bags of ice and a power. <laughs> I mean, you can't win if you don't play, right? 63. That's right. You can't win if you don't play. Lotto fever continues. The Powerball jackpot reaching a, get this, $1.6 billion. The jackpots have been growing for three months. And as a result of 39 drawings with no winner, the intensity is increasing with every single one. That's right. The next drawing is today. If someone wins, they can choose to get the entire sum of money in gradual payments over 29 years or a lump sum, lump sum payment of more than $782 million. All right, so Jonathan, I know Mia's here too. Hopefully we can pull up her mic. You win $782 million. What are you doing? Jonathan, you start. Goodness, that's an excellent question. <laughs> I will buy myself a house. Okay. Buy my parents a house. Nice. Uh, donate some money to some some really good charities. Of course. And then uh, invest another okay. amount. Okay, Mia, what do we got going on? All of those things. Uh -huh. Fantastic. Plus, I would travel. Travel, do, nice. Do some serious traveling. Yes. Nice. So, what so about you, you, Max? Do you guys? Uh, I'm going to evade the question. Do you guys plan on <laughs> playing tonight? Yes, because if you don't okay. play, you don't win. <laughs> if you don't play, you can't win. You Mia. miss 100% of the shots you don't take. All right, Michael Jordan, so are you playing? I guess I should now. I guess we, we have, have to, to now. That's true. All right. I'll go in for my two bags of ice and my lotto ticket. <laughs> I'm out with 750 million. Time now, 857, 55 degrees out. New this morning, San Antonio police searching for a suspect involved in an overnight shooting at an east side bar. And taking a look live through live cam, the sun is out. It is 9 o'clock in the morning, 55 degrees. It's going to be a beautiful day, San Antonio. Good morning, 9 o'clock this Saturday. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. We started the 8 o'clock outside. It was crisp. It was clean. It was beautiful. And then Mia joined us at 8.30 outside. Mia, you got the sunrise and everything. It was so beautiful. I know I was saying that I was so jealous that they got to go outside and hang out for the start of the 8 o'clock hour because the fall-like weather is back. I know it was super muggy over the past couple of mornings. It is a much different story out there early this Saturday. The weather may be great, and we'll talk all about what we're expecting throughout the remainder of the day today and into the second half of the weekend as well. But the pollen count could be better. We just got this in here. Mold are high today and juniper makes its return in the moderate category. So yes, great weather, but if your sinuses are maybe acting up just a little bit or you've got some watery eyes, 
could definitely be due to the pollens out there as well. But yes, let's get a quick view at those temperatures here across the San Antonio area. Much cooler than where we were this time yesterday in the 50s for the most part here in Bear County. Upper 40s for places like Rio Medina this 9 a.m. hour stretching up into the hill country 45 in Kerrville 49 in Comfort as well as stretching over to Bulverde 58 officially over at the airport. We saw the beautiful view outside on live cam. All of that sunshine in place that is here to stay for this Saturday. So if you have any weekend plans outdoors again, besides the pollen being a little elevated out there, it is going to be beautiful weather wise temperatures climbing into the low 70s by lunchtime. I think upper 70s is where a lot of us are going to top off here this afternoon. So overall, pleasant weather wise in terms of your weekend forecast. Tomorrow is going to start off chilly and it is going to be a little warmer into the afternoon. We're going to start to see some humidity work back in before the day is done tomorrow. So we're going to talk about that as well as what that humidity could mean in terms of maybe some areas of patchy fog early next week in the mornings as well as some additional patches of drizzle and sprinkles. Y'all we will talk all about that and get you a full look at the upcoming week in just a few. Thank you, Mia. New this morning, a man fighting for his life after being shot in the face. This is what we know right now. It all unfolded around 3 this morning near Bonanza and Monterey Street. That's where police tell us the man was shot while being in his vehicle. He then lost control, hit a parked car. He was later taken to the hospital, we're told, with critical injuries. Right now, police don't know why he was shot, and at last check, no arrests have been made. The search is on for the person who shot two people at an Eastside bar. It happened around 1 o'clock this morning on Rigsby Avenue. Officers say one man was shot in the hand following an argument at the Vibe Sports Bar. A bouncer who tried to stop the fight was grazed by a bullet in his leg. They are both expected to be okay. And a big update to a deadly overnight crash we've been telling you about through the morning. We have learned that two people are now pronounced dead. This all happened around 1130 last night. This is on the city's southeast side. Officers tell us they got a call about a driver swerving, causing other vehicles to go off the road. Then we're told that same driver went off of I-35 onto some train tracks. That is when they crashed into the train. Now the driver and a passenger in the vehicle pronounced dead at the scene. And tonight, the Diwali Festival of Lights is set to happen, and it's a celebration of Indian and Hindi culture. All right, so this year, it's going to have a little Latin flair as well. Thousands of people dancing the night away. So if you do go, you're going to see a lot of marigolds. The color represents good luck for the new year. Organizer Asha John says there's going to be a lot of entertainment, a full river parade, fireworks, and so much more. A new feature this year is a 30 by 30 illumination maze that you could walk through. That's a colored light maze. The event is happening tonight at Hemisphere Park and at the Arneson River Theater from 4.30 p.m. until midnight. And happening today, First Mark Credit Union is hosting its third annual Turkey for Teachers giveaway. The event is to honor local educators for Thanksgiving. It will be at First Mark Corporate Office. That's at 2023 Gold Canyon Road, San Antonio, starting this morning at 9 to noon. This year, they are partnering with uh, the group, including the Lonnie Walker, the Fourth Foundation, and KLRN to give away holiday turkeys. They will be giving out a thousand turkeys to local teachers. The San Antonio Spurs Coyote or Coyote is scheduled to make an appearance. And also happening today, a blood drive. Our community has a three day blood supply. Type O blood is that only a two day supply, so blood donors can help out, step up, and give back this holiday season, providing a toy to a pediatric cancer patient or 25 meals to someone in need. And all of this is through the South Texas Bloods Partnerships. Now, if you donate today, you're going to be treated to a live acoustic musical performance and a visit from the South Texas Blood and Tissue mascot. It's going on from noon to 5 p.m. today, 3650 TPC Parkway. If you have any questions, we have all those answers on KSAT.com. And the San Antonio Zoo is honoring military personnel with free admission this November. The offer applies to active duty retired veteran members of the military, National Guard and Reserves with proper ID. And according to a news release, up to four immediate family members of military personnel can receive 50% off standard admission from November 1st through November 30th.
All right, time now, 9.06, 57 degrees out. And if you're looking for things to do this month, we've got a full and complete list of some of those events coming up. Plus, a look at some of these devastating storms that destroyed a lot of buildings and homes in parts of Texas overnight. We're going to give you an inside look. And taking a look outside, it's a beautiful day. It is 57 degrees. We've already seen joggers taking advantage of this gorgeous day. We'll learn more on how the weekend's going to play out coming up after the break.